Hello, everyone. <laughs> hello. Um, hello. Hello. And hello. So it's, it's hello. 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 There we are. Anybody remembers that anymore, ever. Exactly. Um, so yes, we'll be talking about um, something in a moment. Just so you all know, uh, later on tonight, I'll be doing a giveaway of the first two volumes of No Game, No Life. Ooh, the Light nice. Novels. So if anyone's interested in those, be aware, and I will let folks know later on. Um, there is some, there, there are some posters in here in, involving some female characters um, bathing. Um, and so, you know, wow. if your parents happen to be around, you might not want to have those lying open on the ground. So just, that kind of thing. So, so you've been warned. If you get caught yeah. by your parents, exactly. yeah. it's on you. Yeah. Whoa, shoot. What, what happened? Wow, that popped right out. Uh-oh. Up. Uh-oh. Good thing that uh, yeah, AMS are it's possible. Exactly. Um, yeah, illegal in Australia. Um, oh. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's right. I forgot about that yeah. stuff. Um, okay, so we're here to talk about Perfect Blue, but actually, before we do, um, I've been doing some reading this week, which turns out to be relevant to Perfect Blue because mm -hmm. I read this week, um, kind of um, somewhat unexpectedly, but I, you know, it's kind of one of those things. Where it's like, oh yeah, I have those. Um, I read two Satoshi Kon manga this week. Oh, so it turns out Satoshi Kon was a mangaka before he was an anime director. He, Interesting. Cut. He started work on a little uh, uh, manga you may have heard of called Akira. Yeah. Yeah. So he was insistent on that. Uh, and then uh, afterwards, uh, he made, among other things, Tropic of the Sea. This is a single self-contained volume, if you want to read it. Um, it's The plot is very sort of traditional, seinen, you know... There's a teenage boy in a small village and a legend, and it can't possibly be true, right? Oh, turns out, right? It's all that kind of stuff. Um, the notable thing for this is that the schedule was so punishing, and he had so he he was spending so much time drawing manga and not leaving his house, and he got so exhausted that wow. not only was he hospitalized afterwards. Um, later, wow. later in the experience of of drawing the manga. He experienced perfect blue. He says this in the introduction to the manga and uses perfect blue in lower case as though it's like a description of what happened to him. He lost connection between fantasy and reality. I always wondered where that perfect blue came from. Exactly. Interesting. Um, Interesting. I thought and, it was just uh, a maniac fever dream. <laughs> <you know? laughs> um, wow. We'll get to that in a little bit. And so, yeah, so if you're interested in, in perfect, in, uh, in, Tropic of the Sea, again, it is kind of a very typical uh, seinen story. Um, but, yeah, he, he had this, this, he didn't have a breakdown, but he had, you know, strange experiences of, am I, you know, is this what's actually happening? Am I repeating the same day over and over? All that kind of stuff. Um, wow. And then... So, mm -hmm. Sounds like retail. Yeah, exactly. Um, and then uh, a few years later, he made a manga called Opus, um, and uh, this is a Satoshi Kon manga. Uh, if you imagine a Satoshi Kon manga, that is exactly what this is. Basically, a, it is about a mangaka drawing a manga, one of whose characters refuses to accept being killed off in the manga, and so the mangaka is pulled into his own manga and experiences stories about that, and then he gets back into his real life, but then his manga characters start showing up in the real world. Yeah, it's it's... Every wow. Satoshi Kon story, like, there it is. It's all there. Um, and sadly, which I think is important to say, um, unfinished. Yeah. Because he got most of the way through the story, and then, um, actually, I believe the, um, the, the magazine went under, uh, under, that he was publishing it under, but also Perfect Blue was spinning up. And all the, the production on, pre-production on Perfect Blue, and it was like, I don't have time for this manga anymore. Um, so you will get nearly to the end of the story, <laughs> and it's going to kind of oh. stop, uh, just so you know. Um, but it is it is definitely kind of the blueprint for a lot of the Satoshi Kon stuff that, that comes up. You see, this is the kind of, and I, this is not to be, like, weird or anything, but, like, yeah. when Monty Ohm with RWBY, when he passed, mm. yeah. Uh, yeah. when the, the, the creator of Kaze no Stigma, Stigma of the mm. Wind, when they passed, it's like, you, you, you have a lot of the the groundwork done and it just yeah. would be really like hopefully someone would be able as a sort of an homage piece mm -hmm. be able to just kind of put some of the 
pieces together to just bring it to a close well, you know what i mean like it's yeah it's like the opera uh turned out where um mm, uh the maestro oh, yeah. uh, where the maestro um died about mm. three quarters of the way making it and mm. um and in when it's performed it, the 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 last note is played the conductor is traditionally supposed to stop turn to the audience and say this is when the master laid down his pen they give it a moment of silence and they turn around because somebody else picked it up and, and wow. finished mm -hmm. and finished the opera well um but so but yeah i i, I would I, I know myself i would probably read this manga if i had known and i would have got to the end and i would be like yeah. please somebody <laughs> you know uh, so this is the problem is that um in the this published version actually includes a an unfinished chapter that was discovered among satoshi Kon's effects after he passed oh yeah which takes it in a whole nother level i should point out oh, so God. this is the thing is that he, he clearly had plans for this that no one can like possibly understand uh, it's just just very Multi, 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 multi-layered. Um, uh, to give you to give you a, a hint, um, in that final chapter, one of the characters is Satoshi Kon. Of course it is. Yeah. <laughs> wow, of course it is. Okay. So um, it sounds like something. Oh God, I'm so frustrated because it sounds like something. Because you know, I love his movies. Yeah, I, this is something I would seriously it's, probably. It, it's love. very much worth reading, um, especially knowing because. All of the themes are there, right, and all mm -hmm. all the stuff. So it's it's enjoyable watching him weave these threads together, just in and of themselves, and it's the comedy right. and the action and so forth. Um, but we are here to talk about Perfect Blue, Satoshi yes. Kon's first anime film. Um, I know this is a film that I watched some time ago. Um, it came out fairly early on in the um, in the anime world in terms of um, uh, sort of popping up um, and. So I, I know I watched it back then. Uh, I think I've only watched it the one time. Uh, obviously very impressed at the time. Um, and um, haven't seen it since. What are your all's experiences with Perfect Blue? Um, mine is, it, it is the first Satoshi Kon movie that, that, that I've seen. And um, it made me fall in love with his work. Um, I'm, you know, I, I, Paprika, the, you know, all, all that stuff. Um, I have seen it many, 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 many times. Mm. And I had the fortune of seeing it on the big screen. And I don't mean at a con, but at an actual movie theater. Wow. Um, the Senator, which is a historic movie theater here in Baltimore. Mm. And so it was in the very nice big screen, you know, like like the actual mm. curtains come back and you know, wow. they have the movie. There's a, and I'm blanking on the name of the comic book store, but they host a anime night there. And this awesome. was wow. literally, right before COVID, so it was like one of the last three movies I saw before COVID hit. <laughs> yeah. And wow. it was just such a treat seeing this on a big screen. Mm. And let me tell you folks, if you get the opportunity to see this on a big screen, you must, mm. it, even if you don't, Satoshi Kon can be hard, <laughs> okay? Okay, it can be hard, it can be mm -hmm. hard, but the, the visual, the, his style and everything, it's just right. worth the price of the mission. Especially Perfect Blue, which I think is yeah. probably his, his most intense film in that sense. Yeah. Well, as you're saying that, Steve, the thought goes to my head like, wow, that must have been insane. Uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Yeah. Pretty much that's the rest yeah. of the crowd is like, that's about right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I can imagine once it got to some of the, the later scenes where Mima is, uh, you know, um, showing herself off to her fans. It was like, oh, oh yes. Oh, wow. oh, 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 we went there. Okay. <laughs> yes, <laughs> yes, indeed. Yeah. John, how about you? Oh, my. Um, I can't remember what. I don't think it was Triad. I, it was some mm. one of the cons I went to mm. that had a list of films you have to see. Uh, yeah. Angel's Egg was in there. Yeah. Perfect Blue was in there. So, got back, you know, did you know usual thing, watching my weekly anime episodes mm -hmm. here and there, and then it's like, okay, you know, it's a Saturday or Sunday, and it was before we started doing this, mm -hmm. and I was like, okay, I'm gonna watch this. <laughs> it's just like, I don't, who is Satoshi Kon, and why is this a thing? <laughs> so, it was eye-opening to say the mm -hmm. least. Um, and then I, I started watching Paprika, and I'm like, oh yeah. I'm 
oh boy, maybe I'm just not maybe I'm not girded up enough to do this. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. Um, yeah but it was it was quite a ride. Mm-hmm. I mean, mm-hmm. Angel's Egg was in that loop as well, so it was like I saw all Ooh. these all these films where I'm like, I can just imagine at the I end. I gotta of relax. It, you're, yeah, you're just like you're like at the end of it, you're just like going, oh, pretty much, stop. pretty much, because it was it was I went down the list, mm-hmm. and Angel's wow. Egg was somewhere. It was it literally was alphabetical, so mm-hmm. it's like Angel's Egg, and then Perfect Blue was somewhere down below. I don't even remember what was in between. <laughs> yeah. All I know is <laughs> watching these things, I'm like, ah, oh, I see why these why these are. Like things to watch. I get Angel's that, Egg, but... End of Evangelion, Perfect Blue. You know, perfect sort of. Right. <laughs> it, you know, it it might have been the Evangelion. Wow. Movie, okay. Too. Because <laughs> so, it was so basically... it was just films. It was all films. Mm-hmm. Didn't matter what the franchise, but it was yeah. just a, a film to itself. It was just like, in there. Oh, boy. <laughs> you you must have needed to see uh, Kim of the White Lion afterwards. Just to, <laughs> just, mm-hmm. just just the reset. Mm-hmm. I would have loved to have had Yuru Camp. And not Mary at the time. <laughs> so I think that would have been a really great way to decompress from this. Exactly. Uh, so this is the, now the second viewing of it, and I oh jeez, mm. you know, there's a lot. Having of watched it, yeah, going to watch it the second time was like. Uh, uh, am I in a place to watch this? <laughs> I already know the whole thing, but it's just yeah. like, oh, I have to be sort of like more critically minded versus just sitting in mm-hmm. horror or, or in shocked awe. Yeah. Chugging a bottle of Xanax going, I'll well, be okay. I'll be okay. And this is the well, thing. I, did, I stopped at about 40 minutes. Mm. I went and had some rice. I, I <laughs> grabbed a soda. Yeah. It took like took a few yeah, minute yeah. break and I'm like... <laughs> Okay, it's an hour and twenty three minutes. Uh, this, I'm at the forty minute mark. Just get, let's get to this final stretch. We it's one of the interesting things about the movie actually is that it actually does support that surprisingly well. Like there are a lot of other movies where if you take a break, you kind of lose the threads. Right. Um, yeah. But because of how it's structured, it, it's really more about the, that visual you know experience. Yeah. Um, it should be pointed out: Perfect Blue is originally a novel. Um, it, it is being adapted here for screen. It was originally going to be live action, and unfortunately I can't, haven't been able to find the reference for this, but wow. apparently it was originally going to be a live action film, um, but they couldn't get the money, and anime is so much cheaper than live action, <laughs> that they were like, let's just do it that way. Um, yeah, the this, this story I think was that they were going to do it, the set was destroyed by an earthquake. Oh. And so, and so they didn't, so what they did is they said, for that reason, they said, well, yeah, Millennium Actress makes a lot of sense now. <laughs> yeah. And ah, so they, they, yeah. they went in, and the, the the scene where they talk, where the show producers and show owners are talking about, I wish we didn't have to make this, I wish we could have used the real club instead of using oh, yeah. this. It's kind of a ah, nod to mm, that. And there is, funny. and there is a live, I have not seen it, but mm. there is a live action perfect blue out there. Interesting. Made in, in the 2000s. Okay. Made, now, where mm. was this made in the 2000s? Yeah. Uh, Japan. Japan. Was, was, okay. Okay. It was yeah. Japan. Japan. And that's an important place to start because this is a, in many ways, a very Japanese movie. You know, it's about yes. the yeah. Japanese pop idol industry, um, all of that stuff. Um, and it is, um, I, it's actually kind of funny because, um, you know, when I first watched this, I mentioned this uh, last time, you know, you turn it on, I'm like, okay, Perfect Blue, I've heard is this weird movie, and it's Power Rangers. Um, right. <laughs> they just throw that at you. Um, and obviously it's the tokusatsu thing, right? But it's, what I think this is getting across so well is this sort of a disposable media sort of theme. Um, right. that this, you know, tokusatsu are literally, like, no one, you know, you have these actors in these costumes, no one knows who those actors are. Um, they're just running around doing the thing, and it's just it's this formula that you're just churning out every day, every week, every month, every year. And that beginning sequence is so important, actually, mm. to, to to the whole movie. But to that point, the very first time I saw it, I thought I made a mistake and walked into the <laughs> video room. Yeah, exactly. Because it starts off literally as the, the, the Power Ranger kind yeah. of thing. Mm-hmm. And, and you're just like one... Uh, <laughs> what? It, wait a minute. Where's, where's the girl? I don't get it. You know? mm-hmm. Which but then you, yeah, and then you see the scene as it unfolds, and it sees people there, and they're kind of like, even the kids are like, ah, this is lame. Let's go see a movie. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And and then you know you see the various different fandoms that are mm-hmm. there, mm-hmm. and where they cross connect, and you know the poor schlub who's like walking, who's who's who knows that this is the end of Mima's career in mm-hmm. being a pop idol, and he's got the last of his 
magazine that he's probably been working on for the past three years because he's <laughs> such a fan. And for he's just 400 so, yen. <laughs> 100 yen. Last four copies, please buy it. I don't want this sadness anymore. This was the first time I, I noticed um, the the intellectually superior super fans, uh, this, this trio. Yeah, and, and I was I, I, Steve you know, Blone's voice, <laughs> um, just so derisive. It's, it's, it's oh. perfect. It's just you know. Oh well, I know how all this works. And, oh, it's so obvious and all that. It's like wow. I I wonder if this is based on somebody. I'm wondering if like you know, these people come up to them at lines all the time. They're like, okay, they're going in. I was yeah. gonna say I I took it as being, you know, the amalgam of every super fan that has ever yeah. come up to somebody who was a mangaka or was you know doing any kind of work. It's just like <laughs> <laughs> you know, in scene eighty two JF where you had like mm -hmm. mm, <laughs> yep. Mm -hmm. Shut up. I don't even remember that either. Exactly. Help me out. But another you thing. You remember that dog that barked? Did you use a real dog or did you use an actor using the vo making the voice of a dog? What are you talking about? Do you and that's when they go. The house? They, they're like, yes. Right, yeah. <laughs> well, it's like the old Saturday Night is... Live with Shatner. Yeah. You ever get out of the house? You ever kiss a girl? What's going on? What's wrong with you people? <laughs> well, this is another thing that is maybe not unique to this film, but definitely interesting about this film. There are people everywhere. Yes. Yeah. Like just this is this movie is packed with with other characters. It's it's packed with other characters and it's packed with audio. That's the other part of it. Yeah. Is that you need to when you watch this movie for the first time, you're gonna miss a lot because there's mm -hmm. audio going on in the yeah. background. Mm -hmm. And I don't know if you guys catch it, but it's Mila's voice in the background as well. Mm, interesting. That's going on in, in there. Okay. So if you listen yeah. carefully, you you hear the the current voices and you hear this. The, the, the very cheerful mm -hmm. Mima, you know, yeah, coming up, uh, bubbling yes. up a little bit out mm -hmm. of it. Well, it's um, also for the crowd scenes. It's like there's yeah. a lot of generic crowd scenes that you get in a lot mm -hmm. of films and a lot of anime, uh -huh. etc. But it's like this is packed with like very distinct mobile characters. Yeah, right. Like mm -hmm. there, it was not there was not an expense spared in trying to get well, the crowd doing things. And, and, and that's one of the interesting things. Like we go back and we watch this. People are going to excoriate me for saying this, but this film doesn't look that expensive. Um, it clearly did not have a Ghibli budget, right? Um, right? And I am not complaining. I'm saying that you know, there are a lot of there are a lot of there's a lot of dialogue scenes in this movie where it's just right. characters standing there chatting, um, and even in the crowd scenes, like and again, they are clearly pushing their budget to its limit of making these crowd scenes feel like crowd scenes. Like these, yeah. Are I mean, you could people. have cheaped the crowd scene. It wasn't Absolutely. hard to do that, mm -hmm. and yet they took the effort to try and make it more distinctive. Yeah. Okay, you could. You I mean you really just generic? You could have even blank faced a lot of the fans, right? To yeah. you know, emphasize the sort yeah. of faithless fanaticism. Mm -hmm. But they made the effort to make them distinctly visual. Yeah, exactly. Um, uh, it's also interesting because I think it, it, it's weird because f the, you wouldn't need to show this whole concert in the opening sequence. Yeah. You know. Japanese fans absolutely know what this is like, but going through the whole experience and showing everybody, you know, doing all the dance moves in the crowd, right? You know, the people with the cameras and 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 yep. and, 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 and doing the dancing in in with the choreography of what they're doing on yep. stage, yep. and you know, it's just kind of like this is where the point is: is like these are fans. Yep. These are you know these are you know, huge fans of this pop idol. Group. Absolutely. It and, also, oh, go ahead. Go ahead. No, no, you go ahead. It should also be pointed out that the lyrics of these yeah. songs are actually are also very important because <laughs> the lyrics are, you know, love me, love me, I'm here yeah. for you always. It's like, mm. yeah, yeah. <laughs> and some people take that a little too a little too so. far. And what I love about this movie, and again, one of the things you don't you don't realize you go back and watch it is how early they show you this guy. Yeah. Um, you know, the 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 creepy guy. It's like, oh, he's a problem. Like I could, yeah, exactly the the, the thing. Um, yeah, I couldn't initially when I saw the film and that 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 first appeared. I'm like, what is this dude? Is he like listening to something? And then they yeah. the camera angle. I'm like, oh, oh wow, wow. <laughs> <laughs> that's uh, really super creepy. 
that's, um, that's like a step up from like I'm squishing your hand. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, oh, can I sing it? <laughs> I, I have mean, you in the palm of my hand. Like, oh, God. Yeah. God. <laughs> and it's very important for this whole sequence because of what happens. The fact that um, you have these punks, you, you know, bust up the concert, basically, um, or just cause a problem at the concert. Yeah. And he comes in to deal with that problem, and he gets very much hurt by, by that. And essentially, from his perspective... You know, um, even after all of the fans, you know, react and so forth, Mima responds by leaving. Right. After all he's done, his his favorite person is now no longer going to be a singer. Um, and so again, it's set up. It's it's wonderfully done. Um, there, yeah, there's that wonderful moment after he's stopping punches with his face and. <laughs> <laughs> And he's and you know the crowd does the thing. There's the throwing back and forth of the models and stuff. Get and out, you know and get out, out, get yeah. out. and you know she's trying to tell them this is it, this is over, yeah. and she wants one last good you know goodbye. And then, you know, like Brent says, the dude is is you know he's he's got her up on the pedestal, the whole nine yards, and he's utterly crushed that this is happening. And. Um, you know, and she smiles at him, or he thinks, yeah, she's yeah. looking at him, mm-hmm. giving him a smile, a thank you smile for like, hey, thank you for stopping from from throwing a can at my head. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and then you know, then of course when she's walking out to the car and they're throwing letters and stuff at her, mm-hmm. and she just sort of just walks right on past him, and he's just like, but I'm your super. Uh huh. Your lyrics mean something to me. <laughs> it's just like, oh my god, <laughs> touch me. Uh, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, every you know, and mind you, I meant to look this up, and I apologize. Mm. When did Selena's manager or fan club president kill her? That was uh, oh gosh, was oh. that where in time yeah. and space did that cross over That's with this? Was that prior mm. to this that mm. Cone could have gotten some mm-hmm. some or the element about the novel? Right. I mean. Yeah. The, the, that's what every time I see mm-hmm. this, where it's like super crazy people who are like, mm-hmm. "You're mine, I you I you know I am all for you, and you are all yeah. we're all together in this." And then you leave me, you can't do that. Mm-hmm. And it's just like, right. Well, yeah. oh. and in fairness, I'm sure there have been you know there have been innumerable examples right. of this in in Japan. Nin- 1995, right. by the way, to answer your question. Oh, so... and this came out in '98. When did the book come right? out? That's a good question. Um, we have to look it up. I was going to say, because yeah. that's, that's every, you know, the first time I saw this, that was mm-hmm. the first thing that came to my mind. I didn't like, think wow, about that, you know, you know so the whole Selena thing was like, mm-hmm. super fan goes nuts. Yep. And watching this guy, I'm like, the first time I watched it, I'm like, oh, this is the, oh. No. <laughs> like, it's oh, that God. thing. Yep. That it's going to do happen. the thing, and I'm not going <laughs> to be happy about it. Exactly, yeah. Um, uh, which is again just you know, um, in a sense, brilliant misdirection from the movie. But it's yeah. it's also I think important to to the kinds of stories Cohn makes. Um, by the way, just in case anyone isn't clear, spoilers. Um, <laughs> <laughs> absolutely massive spoilers. Um, because it's not just him, right? Right. Um, yeah. And and but Satoshi Cohn is not. I mean, whenever anyone makes a movie like this, it's tempting to to be very cute with it. To put in lots of layers and lots of sort of, of, of lots of red herrings, and Satoshi Kon isn't really doing that here. He he is presenting something that is mysterious and that is strange, but it is going in a um, uh, it's going in a direction, right? He's telling a story about right. mental illness, really, um, which I should also point out. Um, we are not mental health professionals. We're going to be using terms like crazy and insane and all that kind of stuff. All of these have specific meanings. We are using them colloquially here. Um, if you are feeling feelings like this, please seek a qualified medical professional. Help is available. Um, but point being, um, one of the things I love about this this sequence um, too is little bits like um, the transitions, um, where you're cutting back and forth between. Uh, Mima in the concert and Mima walking home. Right. And then she opens the door on her leaving from the concert. Um, and it is 
it's almost obvious in the sense that she turns the, the, you know, the key and then we almost wait a few moments to watch all the characters come out to kind of prime us. You know, it, it's there to right. say, hey, these weird transitions are going to start happening. Get used to it, basically. Right. Um, which, I, again, I think is just really smart storytelling. Um, I also want to point out, by the way, again, Satoshi Kon nerds alert, um, uh, Satoshi Kon made a commercial um, as part of a series of, well, not, not really technically a commercial, um, a TV channel asked various anime creators to make uh, uh, essentially 30-second short films for them, and they aired them in commercial breaks. Um, and um, he made one, uh, it's called Good Morning, um, and it's about a woman yeah. waking up and so forth and so on. It's actually the last thing he made before he passed. Um, I think it's Mima's Bedroom. It's laid out exactly the same way as Mima's Bedroom. Mima's um, Room? Yeah, Mima's Room, Mima's That's Room. room. <laughs> exactly. Um, speaking of which, it should be pointed out how weird it is going back to a time where Mima does not know what the internet is. Yeah. <laughs> I love that. I love that. Even when you see it for the first time, like yeah. way back when I saw it for the first time, way back when, I was just like, I don't know what the internet is. What's going on here? Well, I love shit that but, goes and buys a Mac Pro Forma. It, it, and it's it says very it's specific. A Mac Pro Forma. I'm like, see if you can find okay, that. Apple and, dropped and, some and money on this to, one. Yep. Okay? Uh -huh. And they actually have the Netscape. I had yes! the yes! Netscape yes! on there. That's the I thing. Have, like it's that the, icon. Damn. I'm like, oh, crap. <laughs> like, they are, it, it, there it is. Um, it is a Macintosh Pro Forma. Um, and I, I checked the credits. Like, they're not listed as a production partner. But they um, had. I mean, it's the I mean, logos yeah, I mean, on it, and everything. It's I'm, I'm, I'm sure somebody did something there. Um, and Apple famously does not like do that, right? It's, it, you know, right. They, that's that's not something they just blindly do. Um, but yeah, it's 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 it's, it's pretty funny. Um, but it is also a thing, like right? Like, lots of people in the mid '90s, you know, they may have heard that the internet exists, but they don't really know how it works or, or how you do all that kind of stuff. Um, which, again, sort of adds to the cognitive dissonance, right? That you're now in this completely new environment trying to understand how all this works. Um, and again... Yeah, mm -hmm. she's like, what, what is this? Oh, it's a link. Link? Yeah. What is this? this? And you have to explain it. And she actually explains it, and then she turns out, oh, can you just explain it to me again? And in English, and you're just like... Yeah. Yep. Um, and then you get this very 90s website. Yeah. Um, I, just, I just love it, um, and and again, this this wonderful basically sequence. just a BBS. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, that's right. It's um, where, but, but I should but I should say please. that 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 for the people out in chat line who haven't seen the movie, when you watch the movie, obviously there's you know an English dub to it, but mm -hmm. put the subtitles on mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. the the because the, the it tells you like the mean when they bring up the meme's room, the chat room, all that <laughs> stuff is important. There's like mm -hmm. so much, and that's one of the things about Satoshi Kon is like nothing's in there just to be in there, just for the right. sake of it. it yeah, everything's it's not accidental. There, it's in, yeah, everything's there for a reason. Yeah. So that thing is is you know you want to be able to read it and know what what is being said. Speaking of which, I just right. noticed here that the URL is I think angelnet.org.jp, uh, which I believe was one of the early like GeoCities style oh. sites uh, where you know anyone yeah. can create a website, wow. which. Connects. Like, oh, of course, it's some random person yeah. creating a website for Mila. Wow. Um, I used to have a Geo City. Geo City. Yeah, I had a Geo City. Oh, wow. my, mine was mine was the uh, Ticket Monkey review. <laughs> nice. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Um, yeah. You know, what, brilliant thing because probably folks watching Perfect Blue are aware of these things, right? You have Otaku right. watching this, and so they're going ha 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 yeah, and then she starts reading about herself. Um, and you realize, wait, yeah. she, she she doesn't she. How does she not know? Oh, oh yeah. How is there a website of her by her if she's never had a computer had before, before and I, doesn't I, know how to use the internet? Mm -hmm. Oh, <laughs> and then she and she's getting through it and, and and she's like having fun at first, and then then she's reading out loud like the very particular things that she does. Mm -hmm. And, and she likes know, to buy milk and blah blah blah. She's like, <laughs> and it takes her and it takes what? her that long to figure it out. Meanwhile, you're like sitting there watching a screen, screaming, going, "Oh my God, call the police!" And, and again, good filmmaking. <laughs> We've seen all of this before, right? We saw yeah. her buy that brand of milk. Um, right. So everything ties together. And 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 uh, to your point about um, art, 
Like, it is very difficult to draw somebody feeling vague unease. Yeah. You know, just this whole process of her emotionally and showing how that is that is affecting her is just so well done. Yeah. Um, and, of course, you have the imagery of, you know, her reflection in the mirror and the screen, all that kind of stuff going on. Um, um, and, yeah, it's just really, really creepy. Um Nothing about this movie is not. <laughs> this is true. Yeah, yep. much. This is kind of <laughs> creep Stretchy central. Cone. Stretchy cone. Um, so yeah, um, and then we start getting some of this this um, overlay with the drama and what's going on with with, with that storyline. And yeah, this is one of those things that I think is just brilliantly done: is having this other layer of the drama that she's part of, which is also kind of mirroring her life. Yeah. Um. But then that that being a whole, the, the the drama is kind of the the drama in her life. Literally, right. it is the thing causing her angst. Yeah, so, she starts so, out as as a bit part, mm -hmm. getting her feet into this new thing, mm -hmm. and then it's all downhill from there. Right. <laughs> it's like okay. And now, now I don't know if you guys have noticed mm -hmm. um, that the show is called Double Bind. Yeah. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. Right. So, for those who don't know, that's that's a psychiatric term, mm -hmm. and yeah. it's it's and it actually has to do with what's going on with Mimo. Oh, nice. And oh. Ellen, yeah. So it's it's uh, you know, it's a multiple you know uh, personality personality disorder, 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 disorder yeah. type of thing. Captain Laser Eyes in the chat room. Uh, I, I had a, a similar reaction when she was weeding through the website. I thought the stalker was there, um, or was like right outside the room or something. Like I was I was convinced we were going to see it. It was gonna, I, it was I thought there was a camera right then. Right, like, right. Yeah. I thought there was a camera in there. I thought mm -hmm. I thought somehow yeah. somebody put a camera in there and was getting a feed off of which is of her. which is exactly why you know I think Satoshi Kon does that. Um, and again, it's a very cinema, uh, cinematographic technique where we see her from a remove yeah. as though we are looking through a telephoto lens. Um, yeah, and she turns and looks at the window and she's like, mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> yeah. Uh -huh. Not realizing in those that, days, that, that a security camera would have been as you know <laughs> yeah, exactly. toaster, <laughs> been a little hard to let the Don't, whirring beeping thing me. above you. What the hell is that? Ignore me. <laughs> exactly. It's funny, I didn't put a giant television camera in here. <laughs> How where did that come from? So, so as she's looking out the window, mm. and this is something you get after a couple watches, mm. and you know that for her in her room, and this is where you realize later on when she's right. not in mm. her room but in her mm. room. Um, how far the train is away. Yeah. But she makes it a point of saying, this is how far the train is from yeah. her vantage yeah. point. But as she's looking out the window and it draws back, like you're talking about the telephoto lens, mm -hmm. it's on the other side of the track, right? Well, where's, where does Rumi live on the other side of that train? Uh huh. Yep. So, you know, on the very crazy well side could be of the track. Track. <laughs> on the crazy <laughs> side of the track. Yep. Um, oh, and by the way, Full props oh, for the the smash cut to the giant eyed anime girl um, <laughs> in, in the middle of the sequence um, where it's like oh yes this is the and again this is I think Satoshi Kon um, very much working with his medium here saying remember guys this is anime like you are watching an anime film um, but it looks like this it doesn't look like that red haired girl yeah um, it's these guys like, <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> Much less colorful. Much less colorful. Um, much more weird. Um, and to, to to the point where we have our taco again. Um, <laughs> um, and yeah, and, and and it starts to get real. Um, yeah. In, in that 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 very fundamental sense. And real I, weird. Real weird. <laughs> real um, quick. <laughs> and you start getting the, the, those bits of again sort of real life. This the you know, the fact that she hurries past all of these fans who are waiting for her, and they're like, you know. Boy, did this! You know, did all this stuff make her kind of arrogant and stuck up? Yeah. Now, now that she's people? an actress, she has no time for us. Exactly. Yeah. You know, it's like she's going through some shit. Um, <laughs> um, yeah, and and, and and again, here's where you start getting even more of that. Where the um, uh, he left, he clearly left that little newspaper article for her to see. Yeah, I know. And and as the door's closing, and, you, and she sees him smiling, like, like see, I'm still protecting you. Mm -hmm. And 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 if it had been, if I had been Mima, and I saw that, and I saw the note, I would be just 
a huddled crying mass in the corner of the elevator. Exactly. Well, I was surprised they didn't. You know. He didn't hype it up where the doors are closing, and she, mm-hmm. and you know, like you'd expect yeah, her to be like mm-hmm. hammering the door close button, but right. instead yeah. it's just that kind of like creeping recognition of like there's that article, and there's, oh, there's him. him. Yep. Oh, well, wait, and, wait a minute. And wait, this is the other wait. thing, you know. Idols have been trained to understand that their fan base is peculiar. Yeah, I guess. right. Like, like they've 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 dealt with <laughs> difficult people before, right? Um, so it's one of those things where, again, you have that that thing of okay, ha- has clearly this has crossed a line, but has it crossed enough of a line? Like, how much do I know? How much can I prove? Right. Uh, right. Well, actually, they address that with the one of the man with the manager, mm, the head of the head of the uh, yeah. talent agent who's saying no we're not going to deal with the police this is just another whatever Mm -hmm. it's okay it's fine i'm fine you're fine Mm -hmm. it's all good except for the kid that got run over by the truck and you know the (laughs) fact that she's seeing a website of her and she has no idea what the heck's going on Mm -hmm. and and mr very and that's the other thing about this guy security guard Mm-hmm. There is no mistaking who he is. He's not oh, a face yeah. in the crowd. He's not a face yeah. in the crowd. He's mm-hmm. tall. He's yeah. tall, very tall for a Japanese. And gaunt, yeah. color gaunt, and and color. and whatever it was that happened in his life. Mm-hmm. You know, the that, very wide that, eyes. Very yeah. wide eyes, and you know just you know the messed up face and everything. So yeah. it's you know he's not he's not just a you know someone who can just blend back into the crowd. You know mm-hmm. so. You know, that's another point to Satoshi Kone where he's just like, so when he does disappear and she's just like, wait a minute. And she's really confused because this is not something you confuse. Like, right. This guy is yeah. very distinctive. Mm-hmm. And so, yeah. you know, and then to suddenly not see him, that's when you start going, all right, cut back on the malt liquor. <laughs> <laughs> no. And this is the point at which the movie takes a further turn. Um, because it starts becoming about um, what Mima is willing to put up with for her career. Yeah. Right. Um, <clears throat> and what, what I wrote down here, um, the nightclub scene. One of, one of the best uncomfortable scenes yes. you'll ever watch. I mean, yeah, it's, 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 it's brilliant in that it makes you feel you the viewer as i mean you, nobody wants to feel that uncomfortable but you mm-hmm. feel uncomfortable and yeah. you watch this and you're mm-hmm. supposed to feel uncomfortable watching exactly it. Um, and and you know, <laughs> you know yeah um and to be clear i can't show this scene on youtube right you uh, can. Yeah. <laughs> because it so for those not familiar with the movie um um she's playing a scene in which her character is assaulted um and what's so brilliant about this scene, because a lot of other directors have made movies about characters going through terrible experiences, and they sensationalize it. Um, or right. they sort of rush past it. And instead, right. we, we not only sit with it, it becomes kind of weirdly mundane. One of my favorite moments in, yep. like, in like cinema is when they're in the middle of all this, somebody yells, cut cut yeah uh and they're just this guy's lying on top of her as they're moving the cameras around he goes i'm so sorry, I'm sorry. she goes no no, no it's, it's okay i understand and then yeah. you know action ah! Everyone's uh, freaking out it's, just, it's just like all the horror of it all and you're just like and you're just like yeah at first you're just like oh the guy's being nice he's he's <laughs> like you know i'm really sorry about this you know i know this is uncomfortable i'm uncomfortable okay three two one action rapey you know <laughs> exactly. and it's yeah. like oh my god uh, yeah um and, and it's it, and again and and one of the things I love about the scene is it is it throws um, it so again how does somebody get to a point where they're disassociating, disassociating fantasy and reality stuff yeah. like this you know this oh. would absolutely mess with your mind because you're going through something that is very traumatic but it's not traumatic but it is. Right. But you know, the, the, and all of these weird things are, are moving around in your head. Well, when she's looking up at basically the disco ball, and it's kind yeah. of like, woo, woo, kind of going a little wacky. Yeah. I'm yeah. Like, okay. Uh huh. And that's that's like her basically just going, "We're just gonna disconnect. zone out. She's not gonna think about it. Disconnect. Exactly. Yep. Uh huh. Yeah. We're just not thinking about it. And again, I love we we after that we smash cut back to her in this quiet dressing room just alone 
you know, having gone through all that, like there's no, oh, are you okay? Just go home. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Scene's yeah. done. Get out. Mm -hmm, pretty right. much. So, so just to give people some context about this part of the industry, when you're talking about scenes like this and things physical, especially like on, on stage in theater, mm -hmm. and you probably heard some terms about this intimacy coaches nowadays. Mm -hmm. And the reason the, why the reason why they there exist now is because of those things is because it, you know, when you're, when you're doing a scene like that and you're, and you're doing it, repetitively oh. like okay so oh, you know I, I, for those of mm -hmm. for those of you who know i used to work in theater mm -hmm. not an actor but i my my office was right across from the stage so i got to see various plays with a rape scene and it would happen over and over and over for like an hour to get what they wanted uh, out of it nice. but, but you need an intimate intimacy coach there mm -hmm. to not only to make sure that you're not going too far, the director's not going too far, and the actors aren't going too far. But they're there also to kind of help guide the actors through what it is that's uncomfortable about it and make them think. Now, back in the 90s, this did not exist. This was not a thing. So when Mima's was doing this scene, as Brett was pointing out, she really is alone. And, there's, yeah. and there really is nobody there to go, it was just a scene. You did good. Let's and you know her manager actually really did try actually in the movie. True. Yes. You know he mm -hmm. he 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 just didn't know how. Mm -hmm. Right. He just didn't really know how mm -hmm. to properly do it. He felt uncomfortable. Rumi left the room in tears. Mm -hmm. And you know so you know that was the best that they could do at that time. So this yeah. really is traumatic. Well, it also and seemed the manager was he's coping with something that is. Mm -hmm seemed like a little out of his league. Right. Yeah. So he's got an idol who's trying that he knows the next stage for the career is going to be moving into acting. Mm -hmm. But it doesn't seem like he's done this in a way where it's like, okay, we just do Here's a, the pattern. Right. B, yeah, right. yeah. This is the path that we pop. Right. We so it's yeah. like he's kind of feeling Making his way up. along to mm -hmm. try and figure this out similarly. Exactly. And you have the problem that, you know, Mima is also trying not to cause a scene, so to speak. Right. You know, she's not sitting there going, oh, please help me. You know, please help me deal through this stuff. She's going, well, the boy, that was that was rough, but I'm okay. You know, so, of course, he's going to, you know, not throw lots of, of advice her way. Right. Um, so, yeah, it's 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 really rough. Um, uh, whereupon Bima comes home to find her Fisher dead. Um, yeah. And, uh, and again, he's great writing because she's the first thing she says when she sees those fish initially is oh i forgot to feed you yesterday yep. Yep. so did she just forget or did somebody sneak into her house and kill these fish or again legitimately Ooh, i it, thought of that part <laughs> yeah again, that was my thought is the fish are dead oh he, he killed the fish he's sending a message um, or, or, or is she so disconnected? I hate fish. I hate <laughs> fish. Oh, yeah. or, or is she so disconnected because that's... Yeah, you know, and that was what I got from that. that. Yeah. But, you know, that the fish had actually been fed in probably days. A while. Yeah. Because huh? yeah. mm -hmm. cause they're not even floating to the top at this point. They're yeah. like, yeah, yeah, they're at the bottom. Like the bottom, you know. Yeah. Um, and, of course, you know, dead inside. But Bob <laughs> Yeah. Um, uh, so she's dealing with all of this crud, and here's where Idol Mima first really appears. Oh. Um, and what's great about it is that great. Um, what's interesting <laughs> about it, yeah, um, is that. So what I got out of the film is that this is very much Mima working through her problems, right? Yes. It's her kind of talking to herself of this is who I was, this is who I am now. Am I comfortable with this? Um, clearly not. Um, no. But it is, it's interesting because you do see this, this version of Mima that is so self-composed, so confident, who knows who she wants to be. And I think that is also kind of the clue that you're dealing with a, like a better word, psychosis, that right. that other version of her is all set, all taken care of, you know, doesn't have any of the nervousness that the real Mima had when she was an idol in that first scene. Right. Well, think through the phone call with her mother, mm -hmm. where the mother's like, but you liked singing. You wanted to do singing. singing. This is what you wanted to do. And she's like, oh, you know, that's not, no, I'm moving on, doing something else. And it's just like, 
So she's coping with this sort of internal adjustment mm -hmm. to switch out of Idol into a different career path, yeah. and yet her fans are trying to reinforce her prior iteration. Mm -hmm. Her mother, her parents, presumably, yeah. you know, mother and and or other, mm -hmm. um, is also reinforcing that prior iteration of Mima. Mm -hmm. And she's the only one that's like, you know, the the talent coach is it really no, he's yeah. no talent coach. Her talent agent guy mm -hmm. doesn't really sort of know what to do. Right. Rumi is kind of like, are you sure? Yeah. So everybody's pushing back, and she's the one trying to claw her way out of idolhood mm -hmm. and into being a serious actress. Yep. I mean, it's a great scene when, they, when they're when they talking. The three of them are there, and at first you really don't know that Mima's in the room. Mm -hmm. And it's just yeah. the two of them talking. It's Rumi yeah, and, and, and around her. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and and they're they're just and she's just. I mean, the way she's sitting there is is just like as a lost little child, like you know, yeah. help me find my mommy, kind of look to her, and you know they're just talking around it, and then finally Rumi says, "Well, Mima, what do you think?" And then she defaults to the correct answer, which right. is. You know, no, I'm fine. This is what I've chosen. It's going to be hard, mm -hmm. but this is what I want to do. Da, 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 da. And then, you know, after she does the horrible scene, rape scene, mm -hmm. she gets home, finds the fish are dead, and she just just lets it all out. And she's yeah. just like, no, of course I'm not okay. Of course I didn't want to do this. Of course I don't want to do that. But this is, you know, what do I do? What do I go? No guidance. No, nothing there yep. and and all the weirdness that's happening and creepy people around her that she's not really able to mm. get the mail bomb the mail bomb yeah mm. right the mail bomb and you know all that stuff stress 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 and she just you know yep. and that's where the psychosis kind of comes in and she yeah. starts seeing idol mima and one of the best parts of this movie is that I love is that you will never, ever, ever know until the end. Was she seeing her own psychosis? Was this her own psychosis? Or was it, spoiler alert, if you don't want to hear this, mm -hmm. put your ears. Mm -hmm. Or was it Rumi? Was she was actually seeing Rumi? Mm -hmm. Yeah. As her, as herself. Mm -hmm. You know? Yeah. Um... Well, and this is another interesting uh, thing is that um, oh, we don't we don't quite see it yet. Um, um, so she's starting to figure out what kind of what's going on here. Um, um, yeah, and so exactly when we shows up, um, whereupon we get one of the scenes that I think is burned into everyone's memory of this film. Um, you know, when Idol Nima leaps out oh, and then just. God. Yeah. Hops from lamppost to lamppost. Exactly. Um, I, I, did any of you and that's and that's full on psychosis. That's not right. Rumi. Right. Yeah, it's not Rumi. No. Yeah. yeah. And but uh, did you get like singing in the rain at all when you saw oh, that? Oh, yeah. Dancing? Not this time, but yeah. Uh, okay. uh, that's what I got in my head. As and I'm just like going, okay, this wasn't creepy enough. I have <laughs> my head now singing, singing in the rain as you know psychosis. She's from, hopping along. <laughs> I'm like going. And of course, that's when you know, you know you definitely need to stop drinking when you yeah doing that. Mm -hmm. absolutely. Um, and then <laughs> no, we, no, Mima, you cannot fly. Right, um, which is then followed up by again a perfect scene of um, uh, this uh, the, the the parking lot in the elevator. Yeah. Um, because we vaguely remember who this guy is. Uh, he's the writer of the drama, um, and he's just kind of doing his thing and we've watched horror movies like we know where this is going but yeah. it is just so wonderfully paced of all of these things happening one after the other him seeing the the, the bloody um sign him walking along walking along walking along and hearing the music yeah you know then the elevator's doors open, and then I love what they did with the audio, which was mm. to distort it just because the thing yeah. was just at full blast. Yeah. And mm. the little box was at full blast, and, and <clears throat> he's just like, now, personally myself, mm -hmm. again, personally myself, mm -hmm. if I saw the bloody stuff on my right. parking space, <laughs> I would get back in the car and leave. Mm -hmm. But even if I said, okay, whatever – and I went to the elevator, and the elevator door opened, and all there is is, is this music box from playing a CD at mm -hmm. full, full pulsing volume. At that point, I would have been like, "Nope, nope, 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 going home." <laughs> well, well the first is... time I saw it, I was I was ready. 
Like yeah. when the elevator comes, I'm like, you jump, expect jump it. Yep, exactly, <laughs> exactly. Right now, it's right. gonna happen. Right, and then it opens up. I'm like, oh, okay. And, and so this maybe just is a psychological thing. It's like freaking mm-hmm. the dude out. But like, right. And then the elevator door opens again, which upstairs. Yeah. yeah like, which again, I'm not gonna show you because yeah. YouTube. Um, and we find out that um, he's not gonna write anymore. No. Oh. Um, he got chunked. You got chunked. And, and again, yeah. expectations set up, expectations subverted, and then you just see the door open, and it's this very mundane thing, this very you yeah. know, simple moment. There's no nothing else going on. There's yep. just the body with the, the eyes. He cer- he just certainly the body, did. no eyes, yeah, stabbed he didn't, 63 he didn't, times. He didn't see that coming. <laughs> Which, honestly, I don't joke. When I saw him, that yeah. is exactly what I thought. Mm, it's like he mm-hmm. sees the, the the little radio thing, exactly. and then there's he's particularly blinded by that. Mm-hmm. You know, to be yep. that was his murder. I'm like, he didn't see this coming, and yeah. I'm wondering if that no, was. Like I, a I think you're absolutely right. Thing, like, totally. Oh, God. Mm-hmm. Um, because it should be pointed out. Um, uh, you know, Mima hasn't even done the photo shoot yet. Right. Um, this uh, is just is... reaction to the. God, there's so show. much scene. Yeah, exactly. yeah. Can you believe how much there is in this 80-minute movie? I know. It's kind yeah. of crazy. Um, uh, yeah, and then we get the, the photo shoot. Um, and, again, it, it, very much sort of, um, I would say Japanese is particularly industry of where, okay, you go do the photo shoot, and then the photo shoot gets racy and racy and racy. Um, because it's something that, you know, uh, especially the Japanese industry has been dealing with for a long time, is that there is this n- nasty undercurrent of, of stuff out there that can damage you. Um, and it's, it's not illegal. You know, you agreed to do it. You, you went right. through it. Um, but it does send a message. Well, and I think for her, you know, when people are <laughs> talking about that he mm. can be a, a racy mm-hmm. uh, photographer, it's like you get... Even though the way that Mima presents herself in the photo shoot mm-hmm. and the way that she's responding to direction in the photo shoot. Mm-hmm. At least I got that sense. You could feel the increasing discomfort in her. Mm-hmm. And yeah. that it's she you it's like you can't hear it, but you can hear it in your own head where it's I'm doing this because I have to do this to be an actress. Mm-hmm. These right. are the things I have to do. Mm-hmm. And it's like I think that's a brilliant piece because <clears throat> There is no dialogue that says that. Mm-hmm. She's not exactly. saying this to anyone. She is not internally saying that where you're hearing this sort of monologue in her head. Mm-hmm. You already know, and you're the one dialoguing in your head that what's going on with her. It's just like, mm-hmm. and, and all you're that's seeing, smart. and you're, <laughs> yep. all you're seeing is her acquiescing in the picture. So yeah. mm-hmm. just show the snapshots yeah. of her smiling, doing the provocative poses, mm-hmm. and doing what, what she needs to, to, do. to do. You know. And then you know, with with you know the audio of people talking about it and her former bandmates talking about yeah. it, mm-hmm. and um, boy, no love lost there, right? Oh, yeah. yep. Um, which again adds to the pressure. They're doing great. She's not. Um, it's also, I mean, it should be pointed out, right? Like there is an element of that resignation then communicates in the photographs, right? Of the submissiveness. Right, that's that's certainly something that a photographer might want in those sorts of photographs, you know. So yeah, right. Um, this stuff is kind of problematic. Um, uh, yeah, and and I love, and again, I'm not going to show it, but uh, yeah, the next thing you see is her in the bath, just kind of <sighs> yeah. Um, so that has influenced. Um, I'm trying to think of the movie, um, The Shining. No, Requiem oh, for yeah. a Dream. Oh. In Re- Requiem in a Dream. They actually got the rights to do that scene. Oh, that's in right. Movie, really? In the movie yep. where Je- uh, where uh, Jennifer Connelly, I think is, is her mm. his actress's name, where she does that Whoa, same sorry. thing where oh, she okay. is in the bathtub and mm. she does that bathtub scene. So mm. that's an actual, they actually got, they went to nice. Satoshi Kon and Aronofsky, um, I didn't say his name right, Dan Aronofsky. See, that's kind of that now. Yeah. But he's the one who directed the movie. He mm-hmm. he he and Satoshi Kon actually talked, mm. and and he, and Satoshi Kon said, "Yeah, you know, please by all means." And uh, so they included that part 
into into the picture. That is so interesting. Uh, yeah. yeah. And by the way, if you want to watch a dark, cynical <laughs> movie about drug abuse, Requiem for a Dream, there you go. Nice. Mm. Um, feel good ahead of the summer. Um, and that is, and, and, and this is where Perfect we... date film. Exactly. Yeah. Um, uh, whereupon we, we meet the stalker for the first time in his natural environment, his mother's basement. Yeah. Um, uh, covered with believable. And it should be pointed out, and this is something that I did not get for watching the movie, you know, this is not unusual among super fans of idols and anime fans and so forth. Um... You know, this is this is this was absolutely a thing. Oh wow! When did the Tsutomu Miyazaki murders happen? The was it after this the Tsutomu Miyazaki stuff? Um, oh no! I that's didn't. worth connecting the dots with because like when they opened up his room, it looked like this, right? Um, yeah. So I, I don't know, but point being, um, and here you see um, uh, Idol Mima with him. Now here's my question yeah. to the two of you: Is this roomy? This is the part that that's kind of hard because yeah. one thing he says to her later on mm. to the real Mima, he says, "But the real Mima emails me every day and tells me exactly. everything." So mm-hmm. at first you're yeah. like you're like, okay, so that was his, his own psychosis, a folly I do, um, um, type of thing going on. Yeah, and um, and if you notice that their moment in that scene. The, the posters also talk. Yeah, they're like talking. They're the, yeah, yep. talking to him as well. Yep. But it's very intimate the way that she she puts her right. arm around him yeah. stuff like that. So you have to think. Yeah, I think you know is psychosis. it is it really? <laughs> I, I think it's psychosis. But you know you really could say mm-hmm. might be Rumi because yeah. Rumi because what is Rumi that we haven't said yet? What is Rumi? Um, not just a talent coach, but what was she was previously? Idol. She was a formal idol. Mm-hmm. So you know, but I might... thought this was his psychosis because the way that she that um, Mima is presented in all those posters mm-hmm. yeah. is idealized, sure, vaguely sexualized, sure. Yeah. But his emphasis, he has all the magazines where her photos appear, but his emphasis is on her purity. Right. True. Yeah. Rumi does not look at anything <laughs> right. like Mima. Mm-hmm. So he's not going. He is divorced from reality, but he mm-hmm. is not like blind oh, to reality. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. that his idealized mm-hmm. Mima is there with him. Yeah. It, it not his innocent overlap Mima. with Rumi. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Right. If Rumi showed up, it, it, I have no doubt it would be like, you're impure. You're not the real one. You know, and it's like, mm-hmm. you would have yeah. that segue to violence on that side you're absolutely so right this is his psychosis of the pure and absolute mima as she mm-hmm. is supposed to be yeah that totally makes sense um and boy is that psycho psychosis that makes um, that makes sense in a crazy psycho exactly um, <laughs> there you go. um and here's where you start getting the the time loop um, oh yeah! Wow, jeez. Oh, this, this is talk just... about being thrown. Talk mm-hmm. about being thrown for the first time when you watch it and you have no context and yeah. you watch this and you're just like, "How many more times are we going to do this? <laughs> how well, many, how many times? times is it real?" You know, right. Like, well, that's yeah. After, yeah, you after know? it loops like twice, you're just kind of like, "Okay, is I lost track? Real? Was it? Was mm-hmm. there? Did it start out real at some point and I missed where it went? Yeah, like, totally off the rails. Exactly." <laughs> Um, I should also point out we also get another uh, Mima skipping through the halls and this is where it really connected with me the budget of the movie um, because oh my gosh do they spend coin on this sequence oh, um, yeah. you know, Mima's floating through the ca- hall we even get a sequence um, where the camera is like tracking with Mima um, I'll see if I can find it here um, well I love she and... dances around people like yeah. you know I mean? her mm-hmm. fluidity of movement and, and, oh it's and beautiful the... And when she's and when the 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 the, the fever dream or whatever you want to call it the psychosis yeah. is is moving through the crowd of umbrellas, mm. yeah. she dis- she disappears from umbrella to umbrella. So it's not mm-hmm. like you know they make it very clear that she's moving in between things and nobody's noticing and the real Mima is knocking crap over yep. and yeah. running into people mm-hmm. and and the fake one just kind of just in and out in and out mm-hmm. in and out and then finally it's just yep just gone. Um, and, that, um, and, and, and again, the, the, the attention in uh, getting deep into the animation stuff here, like there's Mima interacts with her environment a lot, 
which remember the cell is not on an act is not in an actual environment like right. you have to synchronize where that wall is versus where the cell is to right. have her bounce off it and have her connect into things so this is a technically very challenging sequence beyond everything else and it's just amazingly done um shadows as well um but yeah, it's it's a it's a wonderful moment, and it's also an important moment because this is the first time I think where we see Mimo really have um, a dissociative moment in public. Yeah, um, right. You know, it, it's no longer just her having trouble with things; she's just breaking down. Yeah, I mean, she demolishes the lady that has like the VHS cassette right. in the hallway. <laughs> she totally wrecks her. Keeps on rolling. Exactly. <laughs> I, I, I saw that. I was like, "Play for the Ravens! Play for the Ravens!" <laughs> Um, and then Truck Coon showed up. Oh, yep. God, yeah. Truck Coon. Um, exactly. Um, <laughs> the earliest appearances of Truck Coon. He was yes! a, very young, a very young Nissan at that <laughs> point. <laughs> <laughs> Nissan, Nissan. Uh -huh. Nissan. Yeah, very nice. Um, uh, and Rumi shows up. Great. Um, <laughs> I also want to add her statement of the year. Oh, she's um, helpful. <laughs> um, I don't know what the. the, the um, age difference is, but right. both Rumi and Cheap Creepy Stalker Guy both have very wide set eyes. Yes. Yes. Is True. that her son? Ew. On so many levels. I don't know. God. But I just, watching it, I realized this time, I was like, oh, they, they do look kind of similar a little bit. Well, I always got, the, I mean, I got the sense from him that it was more of a, a malformation then possibly yeah. yeah. that yeah. I like if you yeah. pulled his hair up mm -hmm. and he looked at you and Mima and right. Mima <laughs> Rumi looks at you that mm -hmm. you'd be like oh look mother and son mm -hmm. be like yeah yeah I don't know um, it is interesting though I always that yeah, that, the, that, that I made me curious the first time I watched it yeah, I was like I why has Rumi got eyes like on the other side of her face like what's mm -hmm. going on with like, the fish yeah. thing yeah um, anyway, and, and, and Cone very deliberately. Um, made the characters not all look like, you know, pretty anime characters. Yeah. Um, right. You know, yeah. there's, there, there's a very wide body dimorphism and, and, and such in this movie. Oh, the, the club violation scene? Yeah. All of those faces of those guys. Mm -hmm. I'm like, wow. Yeah. Um, she's playing around with that. And it, to be pointed out, yeah, they have plenty of people in, in real life with white set eyes, right? Like, that is yeah. the thing that happens. Right. Um, but yeah, so, so we get our, um, our, our wonderful time loop here. Um, um, and then things start getting worse and worse. Um, now, I should point out, gosh, um, I keep showing things. Um, hey. Yeah, exactly. Um, so we have the, yeah, this is the point which I kind of can't show a lot of things, uh, because we get the scene where uh, the director is being killed. Right. And this is, confuses a lot of people, because we see Mima doing it. Um... I believe what we're we're seeing things in a couple different levels here. I think that Mima is um, imagining herself doing it. Mima did not actually do that, but given all the things she's been through, there's some part of her mind that kind of wishes this hadn't happened, and so she's you know in right. her the, in her did mind. You mean the photographer. The photographer. Thank you. Sorry. Yeah, 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 yeah the photographer. The photographer. Yeah, Thank okay. you. Yeah, yeah. yeah. When the photographer's being killed, um, because there's all the imagery obviously of, of what she went through. Um, and so I think, she, you know, what, well, personally what I think happened is that she heard about this happening, but then still has the psychosis. So at some point during her, you know, dealing with that, she then imagines herself doing it and then realize, then comes back to reality, real, didn't realize it happens, find out it happened, assume that she was the one who did it, right? Right. Um... Because I don't, you know, it, it, I don't, I don't, because the Mima we see doing that is not idol Mima. It's right. clearly Mima. Um, but I think it's just her it, 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 fantasizing, basically. Um, again, understandably. Well, I mean, she's, it's again this push to go back to being an idol. Mm -hmm. So you eliminate, you eliminate a person and an experience that would have kept you being an actress yeah you had not had that experience and that person had not done that mm -hmm. there could still be a path back to idol but yeah 
that person represents a significant block to that. And it should be pointed out, um, there are very, very, very strong um, beliefs around idol purity. Um, yes. Idols cannot have boyfriends. Idols cannot do any. They cannot date. They can't do any of these sorts of things. Um, they have to maintain this image. So, which when, is what me mania, the guy with the mm -hmm, eyes. Yeah, thing, that's yep. all he's about. Is yep. pure. Yeah. Not you're mm -hmm. filthy. You're if you're not you, then you're filth. And like, there's and there's been a lot of controversy. I mean, there was controversy when Aya Hirano, an anime voice actress, announced that she had a boyfriend. Like that was considered, wow. during, you know, not something that you do. Um, so the fact that, that Neva has gone through this stuff means she can never be a pop idol again. Like, it is very, very firm. Yeah. Um, and again, it's what, what kind of Satoshi Kon is, is highlighting here are these weird double standards. Um, and expectations around people that are kind of not reasonable. Um, and then we build up to the climax. Just a little bit. Yeah, just a little bit. Um, so we go to the climax, which again I can't show lots of, um, yeah. because here's where we find out what's actually going on. Um, and one of the things I love about this sequence is she gets assaulted by creepy uh, soccer guy. Me, um, me mania. Or me mania. Is it me mania? Yeah, it's yeah. me mania. Me mania. Me mania. Yeah. Um, and I love how simple his death is. You know, yeah. she she brains him, and he just kind of stands up. And it just slumps over. Yeah. Actually, that's not where he dies. Hmm. That's the um, precursor to his death. His death. <laughs> yeah, no. It, it has an amazingly thick skull because, yeah. you know, there's that great scene where she chunks yeah. him and mm -hmm. he just, and he's just, and he's just, just like, just like stunned look <laughs> on his face. And then, then he just like, eh, and he gets up and he falls over and, and, you know, whatever you think he's dead. Yeah. What it is is that he, as he was, as she, he recovered. And he was looking for her. Yeah. So then, when he came out, this is what uh, mm. when you read about the what the right. scene where you find the two bodies of the, her manager, mm -hmm. manager, and him. Mm -hmm. The manager fought him, and they oh, both died. Oh, gotcha. Okay. And they both and they both died. Gotcha. Okay. And or or they were in the middle of fighting, and Ruby was able to deliver the. That was kind of what I thought was going to happen because yeah. the injuries are consistent, consistent. with the photographer. Yeah. And that even though Mima whacked him in, in the face, you don't know necessarily because he doesn't spew because, blood at that point. And, she he, out. and yet when you see the manager and him, he very definitely has an eye gouged out. Mm -hmm. And it's just like, mm -hmm. who gouges eyes out? Right. And, 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 she, like, oh. and she made a choice of weapon. Mm. Remember that when she's groping, when he's setting up the could have been a screwdriver. Thing, it could have been the screwdriver mm. in the eye. Mm. It was instead of a hammer to the side of the face. Mm. Yeah, yeah. You're right. Um, um, and here's where we discover what's going on. And again, very smart filmmaking here um, because she wakes up in this yeah. house, and I, I, he fooled me again. Because I saw this, and some part of my brain was like, oh, she's back in her room. This doesn't quite look like it. Maybe she's redecorated. I don't know. Um, or a time loop. I got worried it was a time loop. Exactly. I saw it, I'm you like, know? oh, God, not the back <laughs> again. Exactly. Like, I can't do this again. Mm -hmm. Well, um, did you notice that this is the level of detail in the, in the animation? Mm -hmm when she looks up and she discovers that it's not her room she's looking at the poster that poster, she had taken yeah. down taken mm -hmm. down what is not in the right hand corner of the poster oh i don't remember the in date. the beginning of the movie when she's taking it yeah. down she's taking it down there's a small polaroid in the lower right hand corner oh right it's not there because rumi doesn't have it mm -hmm. but rumi can get the poster yep yep Nice. I yeah. didn't even notice that. Mm -hmm. Interesting. There we go. Um, which leads to the climax. Um, oh, right. God. Where you get, again, just this, this gorgeous sequence. God, it's gorgeous, but it's creepy as all. Oh, and, oh yeah. and ties back to that earlier thing where people, 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 crowds everywhere, and now suddenly everyone's gone. Gone. Yeah. Yep. Um, and you have to wonder, again, are they really? 
<laughs> is she just mentally calling out, but just not seeing anyone there? I don't know. Yeah. Um, uh, but I also... find it very interesting that the again the back to the purity of, of mm. Rumi's concept of Mima. Mm-hmm. Notice how Rumi changes the costume. Yep. Mm. And it's From like white to red. Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. She has bastardized her own pure Mm -hmm. image of Mima and has done something different with it. And now you see how deep her twisted concept of things are. He's not, she's not just imitating Mima anymore. Now some kind of odd amalgam of the things that Rumi thinks Mima should be beyond just what she was. This is like, Oh, damn, that's getting crazy. Let me ask you guys a question. Um, Because this is something that I've gone back and forth, back and forth for years. I've never Mm. settled in on it. Cam is the duo now, right? Mm -hmm. And they're doing that, Yukiko, right? Mm -hmm. And they're doing a a show on that rooftop, right? They're doing a performance, right? As they're doing the performance, creepy stalker guy, Mania, is there. And he's watching them, and you see him idealizing Mima being there in the right. middle. Yes. Of mm-hmm. Did you notice that the two of them, and I cannot for the life of me. Okay, so the two of them are looking inward to where yeah. Mima would be, mm-hmm. and they have horrified expressions on their face. Yeah, they do. It, now, this is where I go, because Mima's supposed to be in the bathroom, right? right. Having a breakdown, right? right? Did Ruby show up? as Mima oh, because when you look wow. at the crowd when you look at the crowd I they have this expression they have this expression of just like yeah what the heck is this and then they break into the song that's their song mm-hmm. the three of them and the crowd goes wild wow and then you see Mima supposedly jumping off the stage mm-hmm. and the two of them the, the the now duo are just like kind of looking like one the hell was that mm-hmm and so, for the life of me, yeah. I honestly don't I know if right. that was Rumi or if that was Mima actually coming Well, for out. them to really react, it anyway. had to have been Rumi. Because if yeah. it had been Mima that had gone up there, it wouldn't have been horror. It would have been a look of, like, confusion, like, um, mm-hmm. why are you here? What's going on? Versus if Rumi showed up, they know what she looks like, and her imitating Mima would be like, oh, wow, this is a bucket yeah. full of nuts I don't want to be any part of. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Uh, See, I just thought that was point. all his delusion. Right. And yeah. it's like that somehow their reactions, I just totally missed that out because I was yeah. trying to figure out what Mima was doing. And so, damn, Steve, you've yeah. watched this quite, quite a well quite done. Quite well done. <laughs> quite a bit. Absolutely. Again, I wish you could find that image without something about nudity. Yeah. Um, uh, yeah, um, but yeah. At, um, at which point, again, we we get one of these in truck coming shows again. Yeah, um, and we get this, and but we get this final moment of her psychosis of without the hair, she's not Mima. Yeah, and she just completely breaks down until she can get the hair back on. Um, and enough I, to even lean into a a, a shard of glass. Yeah, yeah. Oof. I'm just like, but wow. but if we but leading up to that moment, the the point again, another point of the animation of this movie, yeah, where they show you know the creepy of her gliding, you know, and just mm-hmm. effortlessly like a balloon yeah. and just hopping, hopping, oh. hopping, mm-hmm. and then you see the mirror image of the reality. Yeah. Oh boy, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. It, it's yeah. just that pure ugly, mm-hmm. just like hate yeah. you. You know, yeah. you're just like uh, yeah. That conveys a such a oh. terrible, terrible <laughs> thing. Oh, it's like oh. Let's see if I can, yeah. There he goes. Um, yeah, it's just it's it's it's, it's yeah, amazing. That. Oh, mm-hmm. um, a truckoon is thwarted in the end. True, um, but it, and, and again, this goes into so many different layers of of. Um, our expectations of what a person should be of this sort of very manufactured yeah. image of the of the idol, um, and the fact that the reality is not the same as, as no. what you're seeing there. Um, so and... I can't remember the thing I had seen, and it's been mm. uh, literally like 20 years ago. And it was it was a, 
an interview with an actor and just addressing the kind of things where people who were fans, not super fans, and it was mm-hmm. it was an American actor, and I don't remember who was interviewing them, but they were saying like, you know, they love their fandom, they love people coming up and talking to them, and it's just so it's so funny how people walk up and just instantly think they know you, yeah, and know things yeah. about you mm-hmm. because you play favorite character, yeah. So they're like, oh, you know, you were great, and like, you know, do you do you ever talk to such and such and such? And it's like. They were just an actor. They know the <laughs> yeah. people that they acted with. They might be mm-hmm. friends, but yep. that's not who they are. That you know, they they don't mm-hmm. actually pilot a helicopter. They don't you know tr- <laughs> drive right. a speedboat. This is a, not a thing that they do. This is what they do as an actor. Mm-hmm. And it's just like, here's Rumi, where it's like, Mima's a person. Mima's got you know, obviously a lot of crap on her plate. <laughs> a lot of crap on her plate. <laughs> and it's like, wow, you 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 busted your own brains because. Because you, she broke out of that box. <laughs> it's like, oh. mm-hmm. um, and you think about how many people stay in the box. Yeah, so, yeah how many uh, folks are just pushed into that thing? You will do the thing, and, and we're talking about the, the what's the pattern, right? And a lot of people follow that pattern of okay, here's how to dis- dis- dissociate yourself from that. Is you do yeah. this, you know, nude photo spread or whatever, and that's going to make it a thing, and then you do this thing, and, blah, blah, blah. Um, and then when that doesn't work out heads roll so to speak um yeah which then leads up to our conclusion which shocked me when i first saw it because i expected an inception ending um <clears throat> i was waiting for Satoshi Kon to be cute to be like you know it was all a dream or was it right dun, dun, but dun. no this is this is not what satoshi Kon does satoshi Kon is not interested in being confusing he's not interested in doing this he's exploring essentially mental illness. But the point of this is that person was off their rocker. This person was not. And this person moved on and dealt with that and is now has their life and is going on with their life. And it should be noted, Rumi's still seeing Mima. Yep. You know, that herself as (laughs) yes. Yeah, that has not healed. Um, although it's not, not her invisible friend. Although it's... pink dress now, so oh, yeah. progress back to normal. Back to normal. Um, but uh, Nor- normal, sorry. Back, yeah, to, uh, back to yeah. whatever. Um, but again, you know, you have this 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 thing, and I, I think it is very deliberate, deliberate that we're seeing a reflection um, in in the mirror. But you know that that final line is, "I'm real," right? This this is not about you know questioning. Is reality reality? This is about no. You went on this journey that sucked, but there is a reality on the other side. There is, there is life. It sucked. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. When I first saw this, mm-hmm. I thought Cone was beat was pulling something because mm-hmm. I'm looking yep. at this and I'm like, okay, somebody is in the mental ward. Right. Yeah. Right. <laughs> Mima's in the car. Why would you look in the mirror and be like, I'm real? Mm. Unless you were Rumi going. I'm Mima. I'm right. real. And it's just like, <laughs> wait a minute. So am I, so who's in, who's, ah. Uh. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, now that's seen it again, it's just like, no, that's definitely Rumi. And she's definitely yeah. where she needs to be. And yeah. Mima has owned the experience and has moved on with her, with her life. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, it is worth noting the sunglasses, um, you know, hiding yourself and yeah. not just being famous, but just this idea of, you know, I'm sure Mima isn't exactly the same. Is not exactly the same person that she was. Like, no. Again, she's been through things, um, and she looks different. She's she made does. it a point to to, to look different. Yeah. Whereas Rumi mm-hmm. is keeping her hair the way that yeah, the, that Mima right. did. Mm-hmm. Um, absolutely. Um, we well, also don't have a really good sense. Is this has has Mima gr- literally physically grown up a little bit more? Mm-hmm. Because I sh- nobody is yeah. injured. Like, right. she's not got stab wound on her. She doesn't have a mm-hmm. side wound. And everybody looks fine. So this could, you know, is this a year later? Is this six yeah. months later? Is this five years later? And right. that's just now Mima's ritual to at least, you know, to pay some homage to, to Rumi's efforts to help her in her career mm-hmm. before trying to kill her. <laughs> and killing thanks a lot. Her thanks her a lot for yeah. trying to be supportive until you weren't. <laughs> Thank you for your murderous uh, spree that <laughs> killed all these people. 
and help me get be an actress. Thank you. Mm-hmm. Um, so. it, it's also it should be pointed out, like you, you know, this woman did murder multiple people, and she's just in this hospital mm-hmm. somewhere. It's like. Hope there are good guards, just to say. Yeah, right. Um, yeah. I'm, I'm assuming her, like, docile walking with the flowers means she's metted up one <laughs> side <down. laughs> As if she didn't need it before. Um, oh, boy. she did need it before. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. If she had been properly metted, this mm-hmm. probably wouldn't have happened. Exactly. Um, but it's, it, well, and, you know, we talk about age. Uh, you know, at least Mima's an adult. Um, it should be pointed out, like, there are plenty of much younger girls who are pushed through this sort of meat grinder. Um, and uh, um, it's one of the things I kind of respect about Cone is that he's, he's very cognizant of those things. Right. Um, uh, because, boy, this was definitely a ride for, for Mima. Oof. Yeah. No fun. Um, but, yeah, that is Perfect Blue. And obviously there are other layers, other symbolism, other things going on. Oh, gosh, yes. Um, but, gosh... Oh, yeah. You know, your first film. <laughs> this is what you your make. Your first Satoshi Kone film, and at the end of it, you're just like, how? I, please, teddy bear now. I just, I'm glad I made it a second time. <laughs> Steve, how the hell you've seen this as many times as you have? I do not know. Yeah. Um, uh, crazies in my wheelhouse. <laughs> there's a lot packed in here. There's a, there's a lot to unpack. Uh, oh. And, and it, yeah. is, it is one of those movies that definitely rewards multiple viewings in the sense, like we're right. talking about, you you do pick up on things, you do notice things layered in. Yeah. Well, as I say, it, for the richness of some of the background stuff that you mm. see, like the Polaroid on the Cham right. poster, mm-hmm. did yeah. not notice that. So yeah. there's obviously going to be a richness that's probably in the in the building marquees that go by right. and things right. that happen mm-hmm. in various places, significance or well, or you know slightly different changes in the layout of the room itself are the teddy bears the same on Mima's side mm-hmm. as they are on Rumi's side Inside. you know what I mean like I'm sure there's a lot of way you could mine out a, a ton of stuff mm-hmm. and then well, the... start dancing through the <laughs> <laughs> well there there is some easter eggs in there like mm-hmm. meaning not not very meaningful easter eggs but just some fun stuff in there like the the, the pizza box the, the the name yeah, on the big, pizza box big, big pizza right? is is the name of a hit song that the the guy who wrote the music to the mu- to the movie he, he was part of a band and he was a songwriter and that was one and that's oh, cool. just a nog- nog- really? nog- <laughs> yeah cool. and so so there was actually a couple of those mm. in in there and um which i thought was interesting but one of the things that that, that makes me laugh every time i see this movie and I, I know laughing at this movie um <laughs> Is Obviously, you actual... cheated too much, Rumi. <laughs> <laughs> but John, I'm you. Oh no! Ah! Uh, <laughs> is the I music... hope you're doing it better. <laughs> <laughs> the music that they play, like particularly mm. when the violence comes up, mm-hmm, right. reminds me of all the the synth music from like, mm. um, like the the dramas of uh, the actual live action dramas of, of that day. The you know the the. Um, Sharon Stone movies, the two movies she did that, that with one with Alec Baldwin, the other one with Michael Douglas. Oh yeah, uh, you know. Um, Indecent proposal. Yeah, uh, no, not Indecent proposal. It was. Um, why can't I? It has the famous crossing leg scene. But anyway, so the the songs, the oh. music of that reminds me of those, uh, of of those of the, of those movies. Was she just in kinda, Sliver? Yes, Sliver was the one with Alec Baldwin. Okay. Okay. Michael Douglas was was another one, and I can't remember. And and that was another one of a person. Actually, we need to look that up because that was actually basic a movie instinct. about basic, basic instinct. Thank you. Because thank you, because one of them was trying to be actually the other, mm. just like in, in Perfect Blue. Mm. But the single music white was, female. No, that was um, Jennifer Jason Leigh and and um, yeah, because she was trying to be her roommate or something like that. They yeah, that's another to... one. Yeah, yeah, that's another one. But yeah, I did, just the music was just reminding me of that. And, I, and then I was just like, oh yeah, well this did come out in 97, 98, so they probably all did the same soundtrack. Right? <laughs> <laughs> you know? Yeah. Um, just like everybody in the 80s used the Miami Vice soundtrack. Mm-hmm. Hey. Jan Hammer. Jan hey. Hammer. <laughs> So that is Perfect Blue. Um, this is not the last per- uh, Sergi Cohn we'll be uh, talking about. We will be talking about um, Paprika. Uh, Paprika in oh. a little while. 
Um, oh, that's a good movie. With a very disturbing hand scene. I'm going to have to watch this all the way through now. Yeah. <laughs> I've only seen parts of it. Oh, jeez. Not just the hand scene, but also the, the body, you know. Is that, yep. The, the, yeah. The oh, boy. Um, also, the scene at the end, which I definitely will not be able to show on screen. No. Um, oh, oh, where she grows. Uh, but yeah, anyway. Um, we'll be using pantomime puppets. Mm-hmm. Um, cool. um, and then uh, next week we'll talk about Princess Mononoke. Which should be, yeah, which should yeah, be yeah, cool. something something lighter and nicer. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Not heavy at a, all. That movie. A rib tickler, if ever there was one. <laughs> yeah. No serious themes being explored in that movie. No. No. no, oh, no. Gosh. Um, <laughs> we officially spent more time talking about Perfect Blue than the runtime of the movie, um, and that is oh. <laughs> very much the kind of movie it is to give you all a sense. And yet, there's still, still so more. much exactly. more. Yes. <laughs> still Absolutely. more in there. There's only so much time in the world, so. Yeah. We... <laughs> so we will be right back with um, uh, the the news and talking about the anime and manga we, we've been uh, uh, getting through lately, and I will be doing a little giveaway. Um, so we'll see you guys in just a few minutes. Uh, we will be right back. <laughs> 